gap ever in Major League Soccer. Brian White and the Jersey Boy makes good in his homecoming to Red Bull Arena. You know how much that means to him. I mean, he scores all types of goals. He can score spectacular goals, he can score tap-ins, he can score in the air. He truthfully wants the best for everyone around him, his family, his friends. His parents approached me that he wasn't going to play soccer anymore. Um, and I was a little taken back given you know the caliber of who Brian was and how good he was. I'm hoping that his story gets out because he didn't take a traditional journey. He is an asset for the team every game that he plays. So I think he's one of the most intelligent footballers that, uh, that I ever coached. I'm Brian White, striker for the Vancouver Whitecaps, and this is my story. He played football, basketball, baseball. Only kid I've ever known to be told he can't get more free trophy cases for his baseball awards. Um, I still have his football coach come up to me and tell him he's the best football player he's ever had. And then he was a nasty basketball player. So, sorry. Just a good guy. They were both always in sports. And Ryan having to go to PDA, that was quite a drive, and I had a more flexible schedule, so I drove a lot. And I loved it, I loved it. I got to hear about every girl, every song, every everything, it was wonderful. I was lucky enough to be Brian's first coach. Brian came to us from a neighboring town, Flemington, where he played in a, a little you know, travel team, the Flemington Fury. Um, we actually played against them, um, and we ended up seeing him and said, wow, this guy needs to come to, you know, to our club, to PDA, um, and actually got his contact information, got in touch with the parents, and really just tried to lay out you know, the plan. Hey, look, this is someone that has potential at this young age. We, we need to get him into a bigger club where there's more opportunities and better competition for him. Brian was a very easy kid to parent. He was always respectful, very determined in school and in athletics. But I was just telling my friends on the way over here, over they had to take him off the field so the other kids could get um, some playing time with the ball. How did it feel to score that game-winning bicycle kick? Oh, we're, we're, we're just both holding right, you know. We got mod air on that one. It got really high. I kind of flicked my foot a little bit. Oh, it's a nice power on the shot. No, it's very nice, very nice. Sometimes uh, we didn't win the game. Jolly, they didn't know about that. It was an air today. One year, his, his parents approached me that he wasn't going to play soccer anymore. Um, and I was a little taken back given, you know, the caliber of who Brian was and how good he was, important to the team. Um, he's going to play football. And I said, you know, how about we just keep him on the team anyway and we'll keep him carded and he'll play just in case he decides he wants to come back. And um, I think once the football team realized how fast and athletic he was, and they put him at running back and he was getting tackled and hit so much, you know, about a month later, I got a phone call from his dad saying, hey, Brian would like to come back now. So um, that was, you know, he tried it. Uh, he was there, um, but yeah, it was, it was great to get him back. He scores like every touchdown for the first seven games. As soon as that, that, that season was over, never playing football again, he went right back to soccer. I didn't particularly like getting hit or tackled that way, but you know, it was fun to try something else and uh, after at the end of the season I never wanted to play again. Soccer is it's like an all encompassing game. It takes everything. It's it takes heart, it takes intelligence, it takes athleticism. It's I think when you take a look back at it, it's kind of like a chess game, and I think I really appreciate the tactics and stuff in, in a game, and the decision making that goes into it. The, on the other side, the athleticism and everything. I think it's just a very complex game that's very simple in a way, and I just really, I honestly, I love everything about about the game. He was uh, a great learner, and was willing to take information, and wasn't the type of kid who thinks he knows it all, and he really was. Uh, quite a great student and always applied things that were taught and if he wasn't sure of things he was great at asking questions and really seeking information that would make him better he was always trying to get better he was always a guy that played all the time 
By the time he got to us at the 16s, 17s and 18s, we knew we could build a team around him. Um, we had other very good players. Um, he wasn't necessarily the best player on the team, but he was just someone that we could, we could rely on. From PDA, um, he got uh, drafted by uh, Duke. So he went to Duke and worked very closely with John Kerr. I think young players now are making the decision at 13 and 14, and kids are moving from one side of the country to the other just to sleep in an academy and get a half an education and may never make it. He took the proper route, he put all his time in, he worked hard, he went the college route. It gave me a chance to grow up outside of sport and meet a lot of different people, open my uh, eyes up to new avenues of the world and new people from different cultures. So it was you know, a really special time in my life. When he went to college, um, his fitness level wasn't good because he went from playing 80 minutes twice a week to stop start so um, a friend of mine Tony designed a fitness plan for him and just to see him the difference between his freshman and sophomore year in college that's when I knew we we had someone that could get to the next level. He has always been joy to me, and um, and through the years, you know, he when he left home and he went to college, he never he basically never came back. So he's become my friend and someone that I you know can debate with and and share thoughts with. There are so many occasions when I, that when Brian thought there was you know that imposter syndrome, like he's not good enough, I'll never be I'll never be able to do it. But I don't think he really doubted his journey to professional soccer. He knew it. He knew it in his heart. But I didn't know it. I didn't even know that was a goal of his. And so Brian is, he is like the low key, always working hard to get to his dream, to get to his goal. Um, and so that's, that's what he has always done and that's what he continues to do. The 16th pick of the first round of the 2018 MLS Super Draft. The New York Red Bulls select from Duke University, forward Brian White. I always imagined that he was gonna be a great pro. And then in the beginning stages and at his former club, I had my doubts. I thought that it may not happen because it wasn't going well. It wasn't the style of play that really suited him. And I, I was frustrated. I'm not sure what level of frustration Brian had, but uh, I always thought that he still had a chance. And obviously now he's grown into a, a pretty competent MLS player. At, at the time, yeah, it was a situation where we needed more more depth and, uh, and Brian was training with, with the second team of the Red Bulls and was looking for a new spot but I think that's you know also something that we look for like guys that have the characteristics of the players we're looking for and um, they need another opportunity um, he willed himself into a position where where he is now and is it not really a testament to us but a testament to the work that he put in um, off the pitch on the pitch um, to become a player that he is today. The initial start in Vancouver was pretty tough, um, just because it wasn't in Vancouver at the start, it was Salt Lake, and it's a new club, and it was only like two or three days notice that he got. So just kind of seeing him go through that transition and leaving home, and then trying to find his feet in Vancouver, or Vancouver at the time. So it was just a little bit difficult to watch him go through that, and then obviously the expectations with Cavallini going down, and then he has to step up into a role he wasn't expecting so soon. So that was kind of tough just as a brother, but he's, again, everything he does, he takes in stride. The ball right back, Whitecaps with another chance, four post, and in, and there is the equalizer. I was obviously upset, like I didn't want my boyfriend to like go six, a six hour flight away. Um, and I was like, really? Like the furthest MLS team like you could go? Looking back on it and thinking about it, it, it made sense. And he's even said like the writing was on the walls. We went from like living down the street from each other and like planned a summer together to him moving across the country, let alone to a different country. Like I spent most of my life in New Jersey. All my friends and family were there. My girlfriend was there. So having to move so quickly was a big adjustment. I don't know how I feel about this. I feel like I'm being judged. Yeah. I'm listening. Yeah. No, I'm thinking too much of how to be in the world. <laughs> yeah, I got a bug bite in my face already. Oh, 
you saw it, you didn't say nothing? That'll do me. That, that's all, folks. Something I always say to younger players is they have to wait for your opportunity. It's something that everyone goes through, and um, when you get the opportunity, you have to be sure you take it. So for me, I come into the team, I knew I was kind of coming in as a backup for Kava, and I was just knew I had to be patient. You know, when I get my chance, that I had to be able to perform for the team and help the team and earn more playing time, and um, that's just what my focus was on. You know, he does everything else for us too. He presses well, he leaks up really, really well. And I think uh, if we look at like his progression over the years, it's been fantastic. You know, he came in as like a little bit of a, a backup striker um, and he's worked his way into being one of the most important players that we have uh, on the team sheet every single week. He is a poacher in and around the box. He will get on the end of crosses. Um, if you need someone to lead, you know, a defensive press, he is that guy at the top, that tip of the spear to lead it for you. Um, he's a great teammate. He's going to give everything he has for every minute of the game. Brian is a unique number nine in that he isn't as selfish. You know, traditional number nines are guys who don't care about the score, don't care about anything else. If they win and they don't score, they're unhappy. Brian's the opposite. He wants to bring people into the game. He wants to share the ball. He wants to be a big part of it. And inside six minutes, the Whitecaps have struck first as one nil. Growing up, never being in the national team picture, having a couple, you know, good seasons where I thought there was a chance to get called in, and then finally getting the opportunity was meant the world to me. We kind of thought it could happen, but then it didn't, and then it was, was it, will it ever happen? So once it did, and we were all kind of able to be there for it, it was just very special hearing the anthem and seeing him, and it was just exciting. I think he's uh, playing against himself. Every year, 21, 22, 23, he's always been a better player every year. Uh, 24, he's been a better player, so that's what I want him to focus in, to be his best version of himself for next year, too. 60 family members, that is Brian White's mother there on hand. Everybody coming in to see Brian White's first game back here as a member of the Whitecaps. And what a night it has just turned out to be for all those in attendance. Here's the overlapping run for Ryan Ricoh's proposal, cutting it back, and Brian White has done it. Yeah, it's nice, it's, uh, it means a lot to, you know, kind of put my name up in the record books at the club and hopefully you can go for 45. It's such a full circle moment. You getting traded and then going back there and that's where you like break a record and kind of have this like monumental experience. I was like, it honestly was like meant to be. Two days ago, we had a very special moment for uh, our top goal scorer is Brian White. Where are you, Brian? Yeah. Whitecaps in the MLS uh, era, and of course we wanted to do a special memento that is the ball that you scored the goal to break the record, signed by all your teammates. Finally, finally. Uh, you know, I've been fortunate enough to have really great people in my life, especially my family. It means the world that they were able to sacrifice so much for me. You are a player that doesn't seem to, to get down when the times are bad and we always know that you, you go and runs and I'm good again. Was it starting to play in your mind at all? It's really only one option, just keep going. You know, you keep fighting, you keep trying to improve on the training pitch, you keep trying to get into good positions, you keep trying to score and that's the only way out of a bad slump and, uh, you know, just kept going. I had belief in my, for my teammates, the staff and uh, yeah, just kept going and fortunately was able to get three tonight. Brian is a man that I admire. A hard-working individual. And his caring shows in how he is as a teammate and a person. The most reliable player that I think I've ever coached. He's very passionate and caring about everything he does. 